Hey, what's going on, guys? Then we are for simple snippets. Back with another video tutorial on Java programming. So today we are going to be covering a topic on final keyword in Java programming. In the previous video of this playlist, that is core Java programming playlist, we discussed the concept of polymorphism in Java. So if you have missed that video, you can check it out in this playlist, and I'll drop the link of this entire playlist in the video description so that you can check it out later. And if you are new on this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that. you get notified whenever i upload new technology oriented video so with that being said let's start off with today's topic that is final keyword in java so quickly open up your web browser because we'll first go through a little bit of theory on final keyword and then we'll jump to the netbeans ide for the programming part so we'll cover both theory as well as the programming part and that's why you need to make sure you watch this video till the end so yeah starting off with a little bit of theory quickly open up your browser and go to our official website that is simplesnippets.tech you can find this article on the courses under the core java programming part or what i'll do is i'll just link this entire url in the video description so that you directly go to this article so starting off with a little bit of theory let me just zoom in a little bit okay so final keyword in java so what exactly is the final keyword in java well basically the final keyword in java is used to restrict the users so that's the primary objective of final keyword and the final keyword can be used in many contexts that is it can be used with a variable it can be a method and it can be a class okay so there are three different use cases in fact you can see it in the image itself so final is a non access modifier it's not an access modifier we've talked extensively about what an access modifier is and you can see that video in this playlist but it does provide a little bit of similar feature that is with variables that is with final variables but it's still not a access modifier so basically final keyword is used to perform three tasks you can see it over here to create constant variables to prevent method overriding and to prevent inheritance so it's depicted over here in images also so starting off with final variables so when a variable is declared with the final keyword so you have to explicitly say that variable is final and then it becomes a final keyword so it, its value cannot be modified and essentially it becomes a constant so this means that you must initialize the final variable right so at least you have to give the value at least one time right so that's that's the difference between a normal variable and a final variable that is in final variable you can only initialize the value once and then later on you cannot modify it so it becomes a constant so if you are coming from a c++ background you must be having an idea of what are constant variables right so this is something similar to that so there are three ways in which you can initialize the final final variable initializing when you declare it so you have to initialize it then and there in the class initializing in the constructor of the class or initializing in the instance initialization block so we'll discuss that or we'll try this three different methods in the netbeans id so what we'll do is now we'll move to the netbeans id to see final variable example in terms of programming now we also have a programming example it's not pretty complicated because this is not a very big concept where you need to have a very good understanding of the entire programming concepts but it's a very simple example over here which covers all the different ways in which you can initialize the final variable okay so we'll try these in the netbeans id so that we have a practice of programming and that's the best way to practice programming and a get good hold of it that is you type it out yourself so let's jump to the netbeans id okay so in the netbeans id what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a final variable so i'm going to say final int and generally the final variables are in all caps so i'm going to say constant okay now if i do not initialize anything you can see i'm going to get an error it says variable constant not initialized in the default constructor so now we've seen that there are three different ways either i can initialize it then and there on this line or i can create a constructor so if i don't want this i can create a constructor so the class name opening and closing round brackets and inside that i can say constant equals to 5 so now the error goes or the third way is to have an initialization block so it's nothing but just an opening and closing curly braces so this is where initialization happens so if you want to initialize some variables or some other entities you can put them in this block okay so you don't have any prototype over here it's just two curly braces inside a class and inside that you put all the initial values that you want to initialize with 
and this block executes even before the constructor okay so if you want to see an example i can create another constructor over here and i can say system dot out dot print ln default constructor in the main function if i create an object of final keyword example if i save this and inside this if i print initialization block i'll say init block the init block will be printed first so if i run this so you can see the init block was printed first so it was called before even the default constructor was called so these are three different ways in which we can create a final variable so if i erase everything out it will throw us an error and it will say that variable constant is not initialized so it is compulsorily we have to initialize it now this final variable can also be static so i can say final static or static final so the order doesn't matter so you can interchange the stat static and final keywords and now this constant variable will be common throughout the entire class so all the objects that we create of final keyword example this class will share the common copy of constant and have the value of 5 so we've already talked about static variables in this playlist so you can check that out as well just that the value now cannot be changed okay in general static variables the value can be changed and we used it as a counter but once we declare it as a static final variable the value cannot be changed so where exactly do you need these kind of final variables well any example or any use case where you want that the initial value should never change once initialized in that case is we create these final variables there are not a lot of use cases where such kind of functionality is needed but say for example if you are creating an object of type class person so every person is given a unique id let's say it's social security number or pan card or something like that so in that case that number won't change to that corresponding object right so if i create object person 1 and then in the parameterized constructor if i pass that number once that number is set it will not change right so in order to have that kind of functionality i can create the pan number or social security number and i can make it as a final number final variable so yeah this was an example of final keyword with variable let's move on to the next type that is final methods so let's jump back to the theory now there there are different examples over here you can check it out for the final variable we'll jump to the final method so when a method is declared with final keyword it is called a final method now a final method cannot be overridden so that's the only difference between a normal method and a final method so this comes when we have inheritance into picture so whenever you want few methods from super class to not be overridden in the sub class then in that case you can make them final they will still be inherited but they cannot be overridden so that's something important that you need to keep in mind so this is what that theory states so which means even though a sub class can call the final method of parent class without any issues but it cannot override it so let's see an example in the netbeans id we have an example over here but we'll try to type it out ourselves so i'm going to create a class named super class i'm going to create void method 1 and inside this i'm going to say system dot out dot println super class method 1 i'm going to create one more method but this time i'm going to make it final so i'm going to say final void method 2 and i'm going to say super class method 2 now i'm going to perform inheritance and what i'm going to do is in our final keyword class i'm going to perform inheritance so i'm going to inherit from super class so i'm going to say extends so we've already discussed the concept of inheritance and method overriding in two separate videos in this playlist so if you are not sure about these two concepts you can check it out so i'm going to say extends super class so now by default these two methods will be inherited over here so if i try to override method 2 so if i say void method 2 it shows me an error and it says that method 2 in final keyword example cannot override method 2 in super class since overridden method is final so this is the error that the netbeans id by default gives us but if i try to override method 1 it will just say add @override override annotation 
So this means that I can override method one over here and then I can print out subclass method one, but I cannot do that for method two. Okay, so this is that difference I wanted to show you programmatically. So in scenarios where you don't want the method from the superclass to be overridden in the subclasses, you can use this. So this is not restricting or this is not basically you restricting the subclass to actually inherit the method. It is restricting to override the method. So there is a difference between that. So the final keyword example is still getting the method too. So if I create an object, you can see I've created an object over here. And if I say obj dot method two, you can see I can call the method, but that method will always be called for or would always be of the super class and not the subclass because we are not able to override it. So this was for final methods. Let's move on to the last use case of final keyword. Let's jump to the website again. So the last one is final classes. So when a class is declared with final keyword, it is called a final class and the final class cannot be extended or inherited. So that's the only difference. And there are basic two reasons to make a class final. One is obviously to prevent inheritance as final class cannot be extended. And two is to create an immutable class. So we have to still discuss about immutable classes. We haven't yet talked about these, these type of classes. A basic example would be the predefined string class, but you cannot make a class immutable without making it final. So we'll talk in detail about immutable classes in further videos right now. Just you need to go through this. If you already know it well and good, but we will talk about immutable classes in future in the further videos. So make sure you subscribe right now so that you get notified whenever I upload that video. Okay. So moving on to the programming example, what we'll do is let's try to make this class as final. I'm going to say final. And if I say final immediately, I'm getting an error. You can see the error is cannot inherit from final super class. So this is just something that I wanted to show you. I'm not going to type or I'm not going to do anything else. Just wanted to show you what that error is. And the NetBeans ID does everything for you. So you don't have to worry about having an error at runtime during your project or during your exams. So yeah, these were the three different use cases of final keyword being used with variables, being used with methods and classes. Now there are certain rules and points to remember when it comes to using the final keyword. And I've listed down the nine different rules. So you can read it out. There are some restrictions. For example, a constructor cannot be declared as final or you can see a final method cannot be overridden. A final class cannot be inherited. We cannot change the value of final variable. We pretty much saw or we pretty much went through most of them in this video and you can read them out so that you remember these and you can check out this article on the website. If you want to prepare your answer for your exams, you can also see the different examples. So that's it for this video guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know how this video was in the comments. I would appreciate that you drop some comments and let me know how this video was. If you need any new videos, you can also put them in the description. If you have any doubts, you can put them in the description or comment section. And yeah, if you're new on this channel, guys, subscribe to this channel as I make technology oriented videos and I've been uploading them regularly on this channel. So I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.